Are these small pumps the end of the traditional pump sack? Or is this just some ploy by the fancy YouTubers to get you to watch their channel and buy these products? I'm talking to you, damn backer. I laughed when all the big time YouTubers recommended the Flextail Tiny Pump X2 as their must have gadget for their backpacks. It was all of them, Dan Becker, Backcountry Exposure, and even Frozen from Outdoor Adventures. Why do I need a pump? The pump sack that came with my sleeping pad works just fine. It's reliable and it doesn't require batteries. Then one of my clients brought the Flextail Tiny Pump X2 on one of our backpacking trips and I got to use it and I have to say it was pretty nice not having to do that pump sack dance you have to do at camp but I resisted buying one. Shortly after that trip Flextail reached out to me and wanted to send me one of their new prototypes of their zero pump. I agreed but I said well I don't even have a tiny pump can you send me both so I can do a comparison and they sent me both. They first sent the Tiny Pump because the Zero Pump was still in pre-production. So I got to use this a lot more in the field. And I have to say it's pretty nice. And I really don't want to admit it, but Dan Becker might be right. The Zero Pump arrived last week and I've been comparing it to the Tiny Pump as well as all of my included stuff sacks to see if they're actually saving me anything because these things aren't cheap. They're about 40 bucks each. So they need to either save me weight or time or aggravation or something. So let's compare all three of these inflation devices. Before we go into the test results, I'm gonna give you the features comparing the differences between the Tiny Pump X2 and Flextail's new Zero Pump. Then for the test, I did multiple charge cycles on both of these pumps to get at real world run times. And then I did inflation time tests using the included pump sacks as well as these two pumps with my sleeping pads. And for the test, I used my Thermarest NeoAir X-Therm. This is the regular size. And then I also used the Big Agnes Rapid SL. This is the wide long version. So it's a pretty large pad and requires a lot of air. Hopefully at the end of this video, you'll have enough information to decide which inflation device is right for you. And if you're finding some value in this video, be sure to click that like button and hit the subscribe button because it really does help this video and my channel grow. So what's the differences between these two pumps? Most notably, it's the size. The Zero Pump is quite a bit smaller than the Tiny Pump. And it's about the size of the fun size Snickers, the ones you pass out at Halloween. The Tiny Pump is 1.8 by 1.7 by 2.3 inches. It's still pretty small. All in with the battery, the nozzle, and the pump, the Zero Pump weighs about 2.2 ounces. The Tiny Pump is slightly more at 3.75 ounces. So depending on which combination of pump and sleeping pad you use, you may find a slight weight savings using the pumps, or at worst, it's a wash. So now what do you get for those extra one and a half ounces in the Tiny Pump X2 over the Zero Pump? First of all, you get a built-in battery with a USB-C charging port. You also get a light that has three brightness settings, a hanger that's very handy to hang that light up inside of your tent, as well as a magnet that you can attach the light to any metal surface. Both pumps deliver the same amount of airflow, 180 liters per minute. But the Tiny Pump X2 has a little bit more air pressure at 4 kPa, that's kilopascals. The Zero Pump delivers 2.5. What that means is the Tiny Pump will firm up your mattress a little bit more. And if you like your mattresses firm, you may have to top it off with a couple breaths with the Zero Pump. The Tiny Pump is rated at IP44, which means it's splash proof, but not waterproof. I didn't see any kind of IP rating on the Zero Pump. So here's the thing. The Zero Pump is a minimalist device. It's just a pump. It has a replaceable battery and it screws off like a flashlight and it uses the CR123A style battery. This is a pretty common battery. You can get them in a non-rechargeable version, a standard rechargeable version that requires a charging case to recharge, or they even make these with 
USB ports built right into them so you can charge them on the fly. They also come in a wide variety of capacities from 650 milliamp hours to 900 milliamp hours. For this test, I'm using a 650 milliamp hour battery from Nightcore. This is the NL166. The Zero Pump also comes with a wide array of nozzles. And these nozzles are specifically designed to fit the valves of various manufacturers of sleeping pads. And I think this is one of the differentiating features of the Zero Pump, is with these valves, you can connect them up to the sleeping pad and they become hands-free. So you can go and do other camp chores and come back and your sleeping pad is inflated. The Zero Pump is also quieter compared to the Tiny Pump X2. So if you're worried about disturbing your campmates or other people at a campsite, the Zero Pump is a better choice. The first test I ran was a battery runtime test. And I did a full charge cycle for both of these about five times. And pretty consistently, the Tiny Pump came to about 30 minutes on average. And with the 650 milliamp hour battery in the Zero Pump, I consistently got 45 minutes. And now the test you've been waiting for, the inflation time. Which is faster, the Tiny Pump, the Zero Pump, or the included pump sack? The results are a little surprising. So for my first test, I did the Tiny Pump using the Thermarest X-Therm. And it inflated at about one minute, six seconds. The next test was the Zero Pump on that same Thermarest sleeping pad. And it inflated it in one minute, 31 seconds. Then I moved on to the Big Agnes Rapid. And the Tiny Pump took two minutes and 51 seconds. While the Zero Pump inflated that really large pad in under two minutes at one minute and 58 seconds. Now, I was surprised with the results of the Big Agnes test and I immediately suspected it was because of the nozzle of the Tiny Pump. With the Big Agnes valve, the Tiny Pump's nozzle just sits on the valve, whereas the Zero Pump actually clips inside of it, making a much better seal. So I tried to duplicate the test. I thought maybe I could use the Zero Pump's nozzle with the Tiny Pump, and sure enough, I could. I could put the nozzle together, which made a much tighter seal on the valve. And when I ran that test, the results were more what I expected. The Tiny Pump with the Zero Pump nozzle inflated the Big Agnes sleeping pad in a minute 24, which is a half minute faster than the Zero Pump, more in line with what I was expecting. So the nozzle made a huge difference. The ones specifically designed for the valves make a much better seal. So hopefully Flextail's watching this and they standardize their nozzles across their product lines. This makes sense from a usability and a manufacturing standpoint. But now, how do these pumps compare in a speed test with the included pump sacks for my sleeping pads? I was able to inflate my Thermarest pad with its included pump sack in 44 seconds. I could inflate my Big Agnes Rapid with its included pump sack in a minute and 32 seconds. The Thermarest pump sack is one of the best that I've used with a sleeping pad, and the Big Agnes pump sack is one of the worst I've used with sleeping pads. And both of them, in a speed test, beat the mechanical pumps. So what does this all mean? Should we throw out our included pump sacks? Should we go out and buy the Flextail pumps? Well, it's your choice. They're $40, and it's a luxury item. If I were to buy one today, I would absolutely go out and buy the Zero Pump. The size and weight make it unnoticeable in your backpack. The nozzle system is far superior, making it hands-free where you can do other things at camp while your sleeping pad gets inflated. And you can get a rechargeable battery for it. Or if you're concerned, you can just carry an extra battery and barely notice it in your pack. So let me know what you think in the comments. Are you going to stick with your pump sack? Is this, like Dan Becker says, a must-have gadget in your backpack? Which one are you going to buy? The Tiny Pump or the Zero Pump? So I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to click that like button. And if you want to see other gear reviews, how-tos, and outdoor adventures, be sure to subscribe to my channel. 
That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside.